What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh Wan. And today we're sitting down humbly as we answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewers. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. And that is what good old Logan Taylor did. How do you get over paint being too lazy to paint your miniatures? Ooh, I just burped. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. And, like, the thing that I found is, like, there is a bunch of, like, oh, you should, like, um, well, I mean, I guess they all kind of work. So, number <laughs> one, uh, have, a, have a spot dedicated for painting. Like, so what I did is um, when I'm going to start doing painting stuff, like, I, I bust out the table and I paint right there. And that's, like, my, my area of painting. What I should do is... Um, buy an extra desk and yeah. put it somewhere in this. I, I tried doing it. Um, I was, I was going to put it right over here, and that was going to be my painting corner. Um, and then that's only for that. Um, so that's one way of, of getting over that. Yeah, the thing about that, I was going to say, is sometimes busting out the table is the issue. Right, yeah. That's why if it's dedicated, if it's there and it's sitting there, um, it's really good. Some of the best... Uh, Instagram painters I have seen that they take pictures of their work desk work desk and that is the key right you mm -hmm. to have a, a work desk dedicated for that and also keep it clean because like the table behind me is not clean like it has a bunch of like just random stuff and that kind of makes you not want to paint sometimes mm -hmm. uh, especially if like your brushes are dirty um, your paint is dry because you left it open or something like yeah so so keep uh keep that clean um and then the other one i was going to say is make it part of your da a daily habit so like when you wake up in the morning you know how like normally you have a routine you should have that for painting like uh you're coming home from work uh, instead of sitting down to watch tv sit down to you know paint some some miniatures or you know right after the gym or right before the gym or whatever it may be yeah another thing too is keep it like focused and like don't overwhelm yourself don't buy a box set of like 10 models and say i'm gonna paint all of this today yep that's not gonna happen get like two or three i'm gonna get you know just the base coat done or i'm gonna paint all the weapons i'm gonna you know it, you have to keep it like concise and you have to be honest to yourself because yep. if you set your height your like uh, views too high it's it's not gonna align yeah and a way you can control that too is like say like i today i'm gonna get the base coat done today i'm gonna get the highlight done today i'm gonna like break it down like that and um give yourself only an hour to paint mm -hmm. or something like that yeah um, also, don't get yourself down in the dumps by saying, oh, I'm not as good as these guys, or it'll never look like how I want it to, because you're already putting yourself in the hole, so to speak. You got to be clear-minded, be in a good state of mind, because if you're, like, mad and you don't want to do it, then it's just going to not be a fun time. Right, yep. And yeah, those are the simple ones. Just work mm -hmm. on those, and I think the rest of it kind of, like, fits into place. Yeah. And just keep at it. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Uh, next question comes from Stephen Stewart. If you were a heretic with chaos, or which chaos god would you choose? Um, it's always changing, but for me right now, I think it would be Zinch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more I think about it, I'd be like, oh, it'd be cool to be with Nurgle, because you're always having a fun time, you don't feel pain, and tentacles may be good. Maybe. But at the same time, it's like, well, corn, you get all these awesome things, you're always ready for a battle. Um, yeah, I agree. With Right now, it's Zinch. Because having prognostication or, like, the awesome, like, warp fire of, like, rainbows and stuff, that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Rainbows. Rainbow fire. I would use prognostication to figure out exactly when I should sell Safe Moon <laughs> and when to buy Safe Moon. Uh, right now. The answer is now. <laughs> for both. Um, this next question comes from the big one. Would you guys ever consider twerking for justice in front of the mall to protest the high school or the high cost of miniatures in 40k? Um, no, I don't think I would ever want to um, twerk in front of the mall just because there's kids going to the mall and they can't handle all this. <laughs> right. Biomass ass, ass, ass. 
Yeah, twerking puts a lot of strain on my knees, and it's like once you hit 30, they ain't bending like they used to. Mm -mm. It's like uh, Avatar at the end when he was fighting the fire, was it the fire emperor? Mm. And he was like, I'm going to take your bending away. That's, that's what happens when you twerk with your knees. Your bending goes away. Yep. Only bend for the ones you love. <laughs> <laughs> That's a motto to go by. We'll put that on a shirt. <laughs> uh, Jacob West. Do you have a brother, Jacob East? Do you guys fuse to Jacob West? Yeah, I was going to say North. Yeah. I was, <laughs> in hindsight. Do you ever think we'll get a new Corn Berserker model? Do you think that Angron will return to the setting and get a new model? Uh, yes and yes. Mm -hmm. Eventually. We have to. Yeah. I want to say the Corn Berserker was teased on that one little like thing a yep. long time ago. In December. So if you go back to December, they teased the Orcs, they teased the Skatari, they teased the Sisters of Battle, and yes. I think the corn. Dark Eldar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, revamps to a bunch of troops coming up. That means that it should be coming up soon. Because mm -hmm. we've seen all of them. Yeah. And when it comes to Angron, definitely. We're bound to see a Demon Primarch version of him sooner or later. I just hope he's cute. You know he will be. Uh, this question comes from Gruff Bevan. When do you think the Lion will return? And do you think that the other Loyalists will return too? Kind of going with the same Angron question. Mm -hmm. Yes, eventually. And when will it uh, come? I'm not sure. I don't like. Are Dark Angels even like popular? Yeah, I mean they just got a codex. They're probably the strongest, uh, like, faction to play right now, arguably. Yeah. But usually though, when you get a codex, you're probably not going to get anything new for that unit until or that army until like the next, the next go around. Time. Yeah. So probably not anytime soon. Right. Because if we were going to get anything, it would have been like what two months ago. Does that mean that we might get a Angron model? Maybe. Uh, this one is by James Bradley. Does Nurgle gain any power from the decomposing Emperor? Yeah, he is Entropy. Mm -hmm. But it's again, it's like that whole thing that we were talking about in the previous For the Greater Wall. The Emperor isn't outright saying, I give myself to you, Nurgle, you know, and praising him in that way. So, I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't... Um, yeah, it's it's like the concept of him. I'm pretty sure he's on the throne, like upset that he can't do more, mm -hmm. and realizing that he can't move the way he used to because he just, I mean, he can't move at all. <laughs> but that that would feed um, Nurgle. That doesn't make the emperor a Nurgle worshiper. Yeah. Right. This question comes from Randock Gaming. Do Tyranids gain anything from fighting chaos? They eat the corpse of whatever they fight to get stronger, but don't demons just fade away? So they might not get biomass, but you also have to remember that when a demon exists, like there's two types of demons. There's either the etheric demon, which would be just like your basic blood letters, your basic um, uh, nurgling, stuff like that. That stuff is just made of ether mm -hmm. or warp stuff. And yeah, once that's slain, it just poof evaporates mm -hmm. however there's the other one which is like when chaos possesses something it could be something like a dog or it could be something like a human um the there is biomass there because mm -hmm. there was an original it's a thing. host a physical thing yeah however it, it's kind of like wishy-washy because like if you look at some of the gray knight art and like models they have like decapitated demon heads yeah. they've got like uh trophies and stuff like that when shouldn't that go back to the warp or maybe it's modeled on them because they are in the warp. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They, they can go into like the void battles and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there was something else to that one. Oh, and then they are also gaining just a better understanding of how to fight chaos. And um, the manifestation of the shadow of the warp is growing stronger within the high fleet Kronos, I want to say. That's the one that specializes in fighting chaos. I think so, yes. Yeah. You know, Kronos means like time. I know the and so the ones that actually deal with time are the Ouroboros ones. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. This one is by Don Krill. Have any chapter of Chaos Space Marines ever turned back towards the Imperium of Man again? If so, can they find redemption from the Inquisition? They can't find redemption, and yes, they have. They're called the. Um, 
Tucan is el norte. <laughs> yeah, the soul drinkers did it. Or was it the soul drinkers? No, Mantis Warriors did it. But it's like they didn't fully go to chaos. They were just renegades. Yeah, the Fallen did it. Cypher. El Farias, they do it like every other day. Yep. The Alpha Legion. Yep. It's like, we're going to double cross you while double crossing them. And double crossing you again. And then they just don't double cross nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, who are you really helping? Nobody. <laughs> uh, West Themes says, that's such a Mexican thing to say. I don't remember what you said. Let's see what we said. <laughs> I don't get That's just talking about bees. You think talking about bees is Mexican? <laughs> or maybe all Mexicans are scared of bees. I'm not scared of bees. Like, if, I, if a bee came into the room, I'd just be like, okay, there's a bee. It's probably going to be annoying for you guys and annoying for us. There, I feel like there was, maybe it was a fly where we just kept looking at it. And yeah. Like stuff. What's right there? <laughs> <laughs> I killed it. Nurgle. Uh, he has bot flies. Next question comes from Conrad. Do sound alchemists do drugs? Don't we all? Do like medicine is drugs? And we've all gotten vaccines and like stuff like that so this question was asked last week and you gave the same response and you said that you do take like tylenol and stuff for your oh, headaches oh i remember that and there's a follow-up question to that um and it says this is by andrew conroy with the sound alchemist's headache does he drink enough water you are onto something because i am 100 percent sure that i'm 96 percent coffee but there's water in coffee right yeah <laughs> Yeah, but, but it's kind of like Dasani. Like, if you're a person mm. that drinks Dasani, like, why? It has salt in it. Really? Yeah. Oh, no wonder I don't like Dasani. But even though, like, coffee is does have water, there is some type of dehydrating process going on with mm-hmm. that. Yeah, for sure, because coffee dehydrates you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to start doing that much more, meaning we have to go to the bathroom even more so than I do now, and I already go a lot. Going pee is fun. <laughs> It, it's enjoyable don't you think like it's like ah, it's a relief and then depending on what you eat like you can s- switch up the colors mm-hmm. eat some beets <laughs> i was scared the first day i ate beets because i was like is this blood no nope, <laughs> it's just beet juice <laughs> how much beets did you eat uh four <laughs> no, i don't know what the average size of a beet is it's probably like the size of uh, like a, a cutie no uh, yeah. So, like me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, eat beets. Drink water. Stay hydrated. Yep. Uh, next question. Uh, enough about me. Let's talk about Gersh. Fox the Beast says, No joke, I would love to see Gersh in assless chaps. I'm, so I got pimples on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't. Oh, that's funny, because that's the second time I've heard somebody talk about pimples on their ass this week. Yeah. The first time almost made somebody gag. What, uh, what was the contact? Uh, they were talking about, like, oh, did you see this adult video? And he's like, nah, she always got pimples on her ass. And the other dude was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean. And by the other dude, a 65-year-old woman. The thing that's difficult about pimples on your ass is that, like, if you get the white ones, like, you won't know. Because, <laughs> no. like, you, if you see them on your forehead, you pop them. But you, if you see them on your butt, you can't. Anyways. That was a good question, though. Oh, boy. Camomile <laughs> says, what would it look like if the Kriegs uh, were captured by the Dark Eldar? Considering how unbelievably unbelievably fanatic they are about dying for the emperor certainly it must be the greatest insult to be taken alive uh, so um the dark elder are experts at torturing uh, and then they have like different chemical elixirs that actually like put you in a state of trauma so death core of krieg like i guess i understand they look badass and the lore to them means like it's like they're tough and they come from like a, a horrible world so they they can face anything but at the end of the day, they're still human, mm-hmm. kind of, because uh, they're <laughs> clones, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they're still human. Like, they're like human bananas. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Are they always in pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> that was the show. Mm-hmm. Bananas in pajamas. Um, the bananas in pajamas are coming down the stairs. Bananas in pajamas. They'll meet your eyes with stairs. Is that it? Oh, uh, Maybe. It's not. 
Um, but yeah, they're yeah the Dark Elder are expert torturers. They will get a Death Corps of Krieg soldier, no problem. And what would it look like? Like it's just gonna be a a leathery seat because they make you know yeah. furniture out of people. They skin them and was it flay them? There you go. Uh, good question though. Mm-hmm. This one comes from Robert Mendoza. Have either of you seen Amazon's Invincible show yet? If so, what do you guys? What are your thoughts of it, on it? Bro, I've been reading it since 2014, so yes, I'm watching it uh, as soon as it comes out. It's it's really good. I've only seen the one where he's like the the I guess the dad or the adult. I don't know. He's just punching the shit out of like a frog person, and then a woman. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. That's all. I, <laughs> I mean. If you haven't watched it, I'd say at least watch the first episode. That'll give you a good kind of feel for what's to come, um, I guess. So there's multiple seasons? Well, as of right now, they haven't officially confirmed that it's been renewed for like season two or anything. But I mean, the book started in 2012, or the comic, I should say, started in 2012. And I think it ended in like 2016, something like that. So there is a lot of material to uh, translate into a show. And obviously they change it up and they like add things to make it more new with the times and also to kind of keep you guessing. Um, so it could easily go, I could see it going for like five seasons. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I think there's also a movie in development, which has been in development for a long time, um, which is going to be live action. And it's like produced by like Seth Rogen. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So it, if you like Invincible, there's things to come, but I think they're waiting to see just how many people are actually invested. Because, I mean, obviously, it's a superhero show, and, like, the superhero genre and trope is kind of, like, overloaded with a bunch of things. But it's still going strong. I mean, look at Falcon and Winter Soldier and, like, Marvel, and it's, like, the phases and all this stuff. So, From my understanding, was it um, the Invincible, like, it's a play on the superhero, kind of like... Um, yeah. It, quick, it, what is it called? The Bad... Oh, uh, The Boys. The Boys. Are... Yeah. Think think of it like that. It's an, Think of The Boys crossing with, like, DC and, like, Marvel. That's basically what it is. Really brutal. Very, um, like, the effects have consequences, and there's no, like, if you're dead, you're dead. Like, you're not coming back. Like, that kind of thing. Hmm. So, yeah. It's it's a good show. I, give it a watch, I'd say. Although, the only the only gripe I have is, like, sometimes the animation kind of gets crappy at points. But It does remind me of the Justice League animation. But the one thing I will say is that the voice cast is phenomenal. Like, just look up Invincible voice cast, and it's like, they have Ezra Miller, which is like the Flash, uh, Zachary Quin- Quinto? Quinto? Oh, yeah. The, the guy, guy with the eyebrows? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the bad guy from Heroes, if you guys are old enough to remember that. Um, you've got Steven Yoon from The Walking Dead, uh, J.K. Simmons, Sandra O. Oh, like, the list goes on and on and on. So they're good. Mahershala Ali. Oh, who does he play? Uh, Titan. He's like a superhero that turns to stone. Kind of a villain type character. Oh. Uh, next question comes from Jacob West. Oh, no. We already answered that one. Do you have one? Uh, this one is by... Oh, Hound. Uh, Shinku Kiritu Ichika. What if there will be some ancient but advanced, enlightened, knowledgeable, and powerful civilization that would aim to aid the Imperium and improve them by any and all means? How will that turn out? They're called the Cabal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, anytime somebody willingly goes to the Imperium, I feel like that they shouldn't. Because <laughs> the Imperium will suck them dry, use them how they want to, and uh, leave them discarded by the road. That sounds like fun. That sounds like not a good time if you're the person <laughs> getting used. <laughs> maybe you're into that. Hey, maybe that's why you came to the Imperium for. Yeah. Um, but the... The interesting bit is, or not the interesting bit, but like what usually happens is what, what happened with the Cabal is that they understand that humanity is just the most numerous empire. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, yeah, they have the most numbers. So obviously they're feeding chaos the most. So they have to go to them and try to work with them. Right. Yeah. And they knew that, th- well, yeah, they, they wanted chaos to win uh, during like the Horus Heresy. Because if chaos wins vast billions upon trillions of humans would die which would weaken chaos and would lead to its demise yep what humanity is currently in is kind of like a slow decline 
And that's giving chaos enough time to prosper. Yeah. So. You should have listened to Eldrad. Should have. He's dead now, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure they'll find some way to bring him back. Don't they? Oh. It's funny because like Eldrad is like the strongest psyker in the universe currently. It's like, nah, kill him off. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't human. Yeah. He doesn't matter. Right. We can't sell models. But it's like, oh, his death will bring in a new god of rebirth. Oh, I didn't sell good. Ignore that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but but Aldrad, he died for this. Yeah, who cares? We'll bring him back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. As always, this has been Gershwan, Sound Alchemist, and we are... <laughs>